been a lot longer adventure to prepare this hard drive than I was expecting. I was thinking maybe a week, but it's actually been over two months to prepare this 15 meg handy hard drive. I know it says 12, but it's got a Tandon 503 in it, so it's 15. I'm actually doing a voiceover because the end of the video kept changing as I kept running into things to check and repair, thinking I was stuck, and then there was a little bit more and a little bit more. So stick with me. Um, everything went right all through the mechanicals. The very last was problems with the formatting. So take a look at it before I open it. Uh, it's got no key. It's got a light here. I like the light. Somebody changed it. It matches the others. Uh, you don't need a key to turn it on. I just plug it in. It's the only change that I'm going to keep with this. The rest of it, I'm turning it back to exactly the way it is in the technical manuals. So, let's get started. Now, I've already removed the screw, so let's pull the cover. Wow. Ah, that's a thing of beauty. There doesn't appear to be any cables connected to the controller card itself. Looks like it's been bypassed so that they could use the drive directly. Maybe as a secondary drive or maybe as a drive for something other than a Tandy so they wouldn't need this controller card. Okay, as you can see here, other than a mountain of dirt, you can see this light that they added. Uh, the collar that locks it in place and keeps it tight has cracked. Uh, I'll just have to glue that and re, uh, re uh, install it. Uh, the wiring has really been bodged in the back. It looks like an old 1970s used car. Uh, this is totally different than what's supposed to be originally. Uh, this thing has been modified to be used as a secondary drive. And back then you had a primary, and the secondary uh, simply needed data out cables, and you didn't use the controller. That's why it's been bypassed, and there's no data cables to it. Uh, as you can see, we'll flip around to the back here. Uh, the uh, computer in is the one that you need for the master, and that's gone. I'll have to completely make a new one. Uh, as you can see, they tried to cover the ports poorly, <laughs> and we're going to have to fix all that and bring it back to the way it was as a master drive. Okay, first thing we're going to do is drastic cleaning, and to do that, first we're going to have to disassemble it some. Of course, there's some bodge wires on here, but I can guarantee you those are factory placed. The other side looks good. So boy, this side's filthy. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna replace, remove all the chips that are in sockets and we're gonna clean the board. Plastic mylar sheet to make sure the top board didn't short out. Trying to be careful here. Get a couple of sockets to unplug. There we go. One of them was enough to at least flip her over so you could see it. Well, there's the power supply. Actually, it looks pretty good. Look, it's our favorite. Reefa caps, in case you're a fireworks fan. Uh, the capacitors all look pretty good. They don't, uh, they don't seem to be bulging. I don't see any, any evidence of leakage. Oh my God. Don't do that. Don't remove that. I called Radio Shack about my warranty, but nobody answers. Got some work ahead of us. I actually do kind of like that light being there. We'll have to fix it, like I said. Oh, wait, look. There's been a wire cut there. 
Well, luckily, uh, I've already taken a look and the service manual for 12 and 15 meg hard drives are online. Thank God. And uh, I'm gonna need it because I can't even tell how to get this thing back together right at this point. Okay, this is how we're doing it. Don't tell my wife. She won't be mad, she'll just roll her eyes. No, I don't wanna hear that. I'm definitely going to have to go to the schematic and the repair manual before I go any further. For one thing, I'm not sure at all about these these wires. The ones on the drive board on top, yeah, those look like uh, OEM. But this stuff, uh, I don't know. I mean, this this looks a little bodged to me. And look, the controller board is loose so somebody's been on here mm. yeah, the grommets are shot these things are as loose as heck uh, well i don't like that all right well i'm gonna go to the circuit Bad track label. 1113 of 87. I wonder if it's still just those tracks. Hmm. That's what I call starting from a clean slate. You guys should feel this fan. It's solid metal. The casing is metal. This thing must weigh two pounds. Ah, uh, they don't make them like that anymore.
for those of you playing along at home. Edge Rotan. Ah, look, 12, 1782. I was but yet a tyke. bit of reassembly here. big honking fingers, I could get in there and not get it wrong the first three times. Clean the shield first. Oh, it's missing its uh, foam insert. I ordered some of these. I wonder where the heck I put them. Hold on. Well, I don't have any foam at the moment, so I'm just going to install it and I'll put in a piece a little bit later. Not like I'm going to have it activated within the next couple of hours. Right. But, hey, it already looks a thousand times better. I haven't even started.
and here's the board. Perfectly clean, look at that. Clean and dry. I already threw a little circuit cleaner on the uh, leads of all the sockets. And now I'll just put them back in. I suppose there's uh, some other people that have seen this, but I haven't, so hey, maybe you haven't either. But look at this, here's what happens. It's spring-loaded. <laughs> what, it, what it is, you put the chip on top, and then, see this? It springs back, so what happens is you put the chip in, I do this, and the, so the chip will drop down into the socket, and then when I let go, it's grabbed all the legs. Watch this. Get it in there. And sitting above, see? Look at that. You just make sure it's down in, you let go, and it's in. Look at that. Focus. That, I've never seen one like that. That is amazing. Why didn't they do them all like that? Why don't they do them like that now? Okay. I've pruned out the schematic, and I'm in for a treat. Here is an exploded view. It's not the schematic, it's an exploded view. It gives you a better look of what it physically is supposed to look like. Now take a look close here. Let me see if I can get it, get it close and focus. The only thing that's in the bottom plate of this unit, or the only thing that's in the cabinet, is the fan on the back wall, there's the power socket, there's the front indicator lights, and there's the very small bus bar. That's it, connected to the base plate. Well, let's take a look. That means this relay, that's not even supposed to be here, it doesn't exist. Neither is this. I don't even know what this is. It's What's funny is it says Tandy on it down there. This thing's been heavily modified to become a secondary drive. I didn't know they did this much. I'm gonna to have to completely remake the wiring harnesses. We've got one power cable here, but I need two. That's been cut off. We've got, look at this. We've got this fuse holder in here. You got this heavy gauge wire on one end, and then, what? what is that? I don't know. Man, the 80s. Boy, Coke was hell of a drug, wasn't it? What was left of the power cable that was here is bundled up in this mess. Holy Toledo. They went to the trouble of soldering the connections, huh? Woohoo! Oh man. Alright. Uh in this, I I doubt I doubt this is I'll check the I'll check the schematic, but I, I, that doesn't look OEM to me. I don't know. Alright, hold on. Okay, small successes. The very small first power lead has been, well, small accomplishments. The AC, the small AC power harness has been corrected. I got rid of the relay, got this out of, this is gonna go, I don't know. So it's been simplified down to what it was originally. Now here's one I don't understand, look at this. A blue wire has been bodged to a brown one and a brown one to a blue one. Like they flipped it on purpose when all you'd have to do is unplug a lug and swap it if that's what you wanted to do. So all I can figure is that they, they soldered it without even caring what they hooked it up to. I, I don't know. But this has been brought back to normal anyway. So now I'm going to have to 
disconnect all this stuff. Just to even see where I'm starting. I don't even know what the heck this is all about. If I can get it apart, I'd like to desolder it instead of cutting it. I may end up just cutting it. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut it. It's not worth the hassle of trying to heat that up. If the wires aren't long enough when I'm done, I'll put on new ones. I'm really gonna have to get another set of cutters. I'm gonna get a beaver to chew through it faster than I can cut it with this thing. Things are apart. Now, I look back at the diagram. See the primary, we got done. That's exactly, the only thing that's different is that these two wires here used to go to the key switch. Well, I'm, the, the key switch is eliminated, I like it that way. So really all you have to do is tie these two wires together, which I did. I just took it to here instead of going to a non-existent key switch and back, and there you go. So now, I've got two more wiring harnesses to deal with. One is the DC harness, this one. And the other one's the lamp driver harness here. Okay, got the power harness back to the way it's supposed to be. Now, it may look like I hooked it up wrong, but the good thing I checked on the schematic, the power cable on the Molex for the circuit board is different than standard. You know, normally it's red, black, black, white red, black, black, yellow, but that's not the way, it, and it is, that's the way it is on the, uh, on the drive itself for the, the power line, but the one for the controller board on top is not that way, so that's why you see the colors don't match, but it's back to the way it's supposed to be, so, next, Okay, another thing we've got to replace is the uh, rubber isolators. It takes out the vibration on it. And see these, you can tell these, they are long gone. They're as hard as a rock. See, there's half of one right there. So, I got a replacement grommet. It's the right thickness for the metal it's got to fit in. The hole's a little bigger in the center but I think it'll do okay once it's tightened down. So let's see here. Let's try it out. It holds in there right. Let's get rid of another one so we can tighten down a whole side. This one's actually in place. Boy, this stuff's hard. <laughs> it's just chipping away, look at that. Uh -huh. Okay. drive I may not would have even worried about it but this is old and possibly fragile so I'm gonna give it every chance so it doesn't need to doesn't need to have any big bangs happening to it
That's not bad. Moves a little bit, but it's supposed to, just a little bit. It's a whole lot better than what it was. So we're gonna use we're gonna go with those. Okay, let's get these cover plates back on. Now on a primary drive, it never did come with any data outs. So it just had cover plates. The only thing that it had on a primary drive was the computer in connection. And I've had to send off for parts for that because that's gone. It was never here. So let's get these plates back on where they belong so I can remount the drive. We got a drive that's got nice secure grommet mounts again. Okay, the bottom of the drive has got some wires on it. Now, actually, it's supposed to end up having three wires from the uh, LED uh, cable. It's about once should be going for the activity light for the drive. One of them should be for the LED for protect, and one of them should be the switch for protect. But I have no idea at this point right now if uh, these are connected to the right place. I'm gonna have to track it down. It's not exactly clear on the, uh, on the uh, maintenance log, on the maintenance uh, manual. So I'm gonna have to do a little digging. The only thing I know for sure is that this one isn't supposed to be there for sure, so I'm going to take that off. Ta-da! And, uh, right now I think I'm going to, I mean, I, I'm going to take it back off, but right now I'm going to go ahead and mount it. I'd just like to see if, um, if I connect it to power, if this thing will spin up. That's all I want to do at this point. You know, there's no use in worrying about these little details if the thing doesn't move. So, all right. Okay, on the power supply, I haven't changed out the capacitors yet, but I did take out the primary reefa cap, and, and I, I even replaced it because, well, I'm a completist that way, but... I just want to see if this thing's going to put out power and if it'll spin up the drive and uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, we've got the power supply hooked up. Right now the only thing that's hooked up at all is the fan, the power supply, and the power to the drive so it will spin up. That's all I'm going to test at this point. It's not even any lights, so. The only thing we have to go by is sound. And maybe magic smoke if I flip the switch and we lose it all. Okay, here we go. Fan spinning, but the drive's not doing anything. And let's see what we've got. Put it where you can see it. I'll try to put it where you can see it. I 
We've got power at the drive. Say what? Oh, wait a second. Hold on, I'm losing my mind. All right. Hmm, nothing. Well, I was gonna take a shot at the power supply, but I thought I'd take a look one more time. And it's a good thing I did, because look. See that? Two ring cracks. Here. 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 Three ring cracks on the output transistors. So let's fix those first. It might work a little better. Okay, let's turn it on and see what kind of power we have out of the uh, Molex connector. See if there's anything close to what it's supposed to be. Three point three volts. That's not quite right. Twelve volts. We got twelve volts on the yellow. That's something. So we got the twelve volt rail running. Okay, I've repaired all the ring cracks on the board. I couldn't believe how there must have been 10. And it's all hooked up. The cables are repaired. Let's see if we get any kind of life out of it. <laughs> how about that? We've got a heartbeat. Okay, the wires to the uh, to the indicators are not LEDs. They're all incandescent bulbs, and they're all blown. So that hasn't been repaired yet. But the wires, the wiring harness to them and to the hard drive itself, have all been repaired and reconnected. All right, I'm going to try to fix these indicator lights so we have some sort of information about what's going on. So the first one's the power light that the guy replaced that used to be the lock key power switch. But uh, none of them work because they're all incandescents and they're all blown. So we're gonna switch it over to LED. Okay, the one thing that will have to be made by hand is the 
cable that goes from the controller board to the back of the case of the hard drive so it can be connected to a computer. That, of course, was long gone. So we got a ribbon cable. We got a female ribbon end connector. And there's very few ways you can do this and get it done right. Don't open it up. Don't try to press it with a pair of pliers or anything unless you like replacing them over and over. Put the ribbon in. Give it a, a slight squeeze until, eh, there we go, until the ribbon's a little snug. try to give it a little tug. It's not been penetrated yet, but you kind of try to move it back and forth just a hair to make sure it sets in to the proper place. Oops, sorry. Focus. Like that. Okay. Doing this on the floor. This has to be pressed in a vise or a press or something that can give even controlled pressure so this thing goes down properly. it cut in. You got to keep going. Don't go too far. You'll end up crushing the connector. There. Let's see how that looks. See no damage. You don't see any gap. No teeth. So it's pressed down completely. With any luck, this should be a good connection. So that's one end. Next, I had to create a cable that wasn't in here. One that goes from the controller board, 50 pin contact, that goes to the back of the case. This is for the connection to the computer that you're gonna use it on. So you have a 50 pin ribbon cable with a female ribbon connector and a male end on the other side. The only problem is the male, I really needed one that was case mounted, but they're about as easy to find as unicorns, so I'm going to have to make one. I'm basically making a plate that goes on the back and then I will screw it to the back of the case and that will hold it. It came out better than I expected. I just used standoffs. I drilled holes in this plate. It fits exactly in between those. It'll help keep it steady. And all I have to do is mount it bit of a, a snug fit but it's supposed to be you just there we go now the plate on the back there it's just perfect the way it's supposed to be Okay, we've got almost everything done, and uh, I'm pleased to say that there's a nice result so far. Let me kick it on. That active light, the green one, is a great sign, and I'll show you why. Hold on a second. 
Let's take the cover off and I'll show you what's been going on. Okay, let's catch up on all the repairs that have been done so far. The incandescent bulbs in the front have all been replaced with LEDs. Inside of the uh, yellow shrink wrap down there is a 150 ohm current limiting resistor, so they'll last a good long time. The uh, LED harness has been redone. Cab the uh, three cables that go to the drive itself have been put in the right place. It's been tied down so it won't be in the way putting the case back on. This is the cable that I made for data from the controller card to the outside of the outside where you put in the cable for the computer. Uh, I was hoping for a case mounted one, but uh, they're almost impossible to find. So I basically had to make something that would hold that tight against the uh, case so it wouldn't come off. Now, like I said, the indicator, the green indicator light coming on is a great sign. What that means is the MFM hard drive is spinning up. It's self-diagnostic. It's saying that it's okay. And it sends that information through the two old cables that I have, two old MFM cables, these two right here. It's sending the signal to the controller board that it's okay. And the controller boards apparently so far working because the signal is getting to here where the LED harness is and it's sending an indication to the light that it's ready. That's a lot, that's great. That's, that's a lot of things that's going right. And as a matter of fact, so far there isn't anything going wrong. There's only one thing left to do. And that's once FedEx shows up, I can make the final cable that goes from here to the computer I'm going to try to control it from right here. I've already got the software that I downloaded on the net, put it on a disk, ready for loading up a hard drive, and once FedEx actually shows up with what was supposed to be here yesterday, I'll make the cable, make the connection, and I'll be back and, and let you see whether or not this computer is able to talk to this drive and set it up properly. Just want to make a quick video to show the hard drive is working great. I can't believe it. It's formatting it right now. There's the software in the Model 4. And as you can see and maybe here, since it's formatting, it's accessing it and the activity lights flashing with the work. Okay. I told you at the beginning of the video, I'd tell you exactly where I ended up. It's been actually about two months since I recorded most of the rest of the stuff you've already seen, but it's taken me a long time to figure out exactly what's going wrong. Because I got at the very end, you saw at the video that it was formatting, but if you look closely, I didn't end up sticking on the screen long enough. You saw that you, it was hitting cylinders, and it was showing an asterisk, several of them. The problem is that is it trying to format the drive and it couldn't get the cylinders right and it tries eight times. After eight times it tries the next one. It wasn't formatting right. And the problem is that in this old thing you actually have to, on the controller board, do three different adjustments for motor speed to get the thing to format right. And I've got the instructions for that and I did it and it actually formatted but the last problem is that the first platter of the drive and it has three platters on it has a lot of errors a lot of media errors things that cannot be changed and the problem is, is that this software has to put the system files on the first platter and so I've transferred the files after trying over and over and over because it kept having errors I managed to shove them all in there but the problem is they don't function 100%. So I can't use it as my primary drive, but I can connect to it. You can see that I access it. You can see there's files there, and some of them work, but not all of them. I'm gonna have to actually replace that drive, uh, Tandon 503, to take a shot at getting this thing 100%. But hey, I got everything that was broken fixed. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the final result.
Pretty quiet, huh? A lot quieter than when I first started it. Shows the zero drive, of course. There's nothing in drive one. And look, there is drive two, hard drive A. And it's got files on it. I'm gonna call that a success. Uh, the repairs have been done as much as I can get with a defective hard drive. I will find a replacement, but uh, a Tandon 503 is not exactly uh, a dime a dozen, but when I can find one, I'll replace it, and we'll see if we can get this thing to actually be the system drive like it's supposed to be. But uh, compared to what it was before, hey, it's been brought back from the dead. What can I say? So thanks for watching, and uh, I've got another video soon. Believe it or not, I've already got something else repaired, and I already know the ending shows that uh, it was a success. So just stick with me, and I'll have that up soon. Thanks for watching.